Today, we're going to be saving your football manager saves, and I know you're used to me just absolutely dripping with fashion, but we're wearing something a little more special today. We're wearing a, a, a jersey, a kit, if you will, that was sent to me my, by the club that I'm managing in Football Manager, and not only did they send me the kit, it's signed. Look at that. It's signed by like the captain, a, a couple of the players, the coaching staff, they all signed the back, wishing us well on my Twitch save. If you wanna check that out, of course, the link is in the description or we have a live YouTube channel where you can follow the save, trying to take this lovely second division Austrian club all the way to Champions League glory. But first we have to deal with Salzburg. <coughs> I feel we do not have much time left before Salzburg's devils claim us all. <laughs> Or I just need to drink water. Drip required. Let's save some saves. You guys have submitted these saves on the Discord and the subscriber section. The first one from the Blues FP10 managing Wrexham. How original. Hey Z, I'm stuck in the seventh season as Wrexham manager. Promoted three times in a row, but I've been stuck in the championship now. Fourth season in the championship and I'm not performing well at all. I feel like I'm stuck here. I've listed a few issues I'm having but I'm sure there are more. I love the optimism here, Blues. My team isn't good enough to be where it is, but I find recruitment difficult. I have an affiliation with Arsenal, but the which I have set up early on, so I have had access to some top loanees, but it's not enough. My tactic, I'm not sure if my tactic complements my team's strengths, and I don't feel like I'm getting the best out of my team. I have a really good U23, U18 team that's generating me good money, but I'm not sure how best to manage it all. So let's take a look at Blues save. So absolutely no joke, gets promoted in an eighth, 12th, and fourth come on you finished fourth last year it's not all that bad with Wrexham but I understand why you're feeling like you're in dire straits now because you finally got into the playoff and now you have four points from your first five matches including losses to Stoke Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest to be fair Stoke finds themselves in 13th Nottingham Forest in fourth and whoever Bournemouth is in fifth so you're playing top half teams here uh, and all of the losses except for Stoke at home which is a, not use your worst loss Three to nothing. What issues are we looking at? Let's take a look at the tactic first. And this tactic is clearly very aggressive. So when I look at this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six players on attack out of 11 players. Seven players on attack out of 11 players because you even have your goalkeeper taking more risks. There are very few goalkeepers in the face of the earth that you want to have as a sweeper keeper on attack. And this guy is certainly not on that list. We're talking eight first touch, two flare, which is relevant when you've got people trying to take more risks. They need to be creative enough to pull it off. His passing is 11, his vision is 11. I mean, this guy is just not a sweeper keeper on attack type of person that you wanna be taking more risks when they're on the ball to try and open up play. And that just belies, I think you are, you're, you're a little desperate to try and score goals. And as a result, in every single championship match you've played except for one, you have conceded at least two. The one you didn't concede two in, you won. But that's not exactly a sustainable trajectory. In terms of your player ability, we can take a look at this through the analyst report and then go through a couple of comparisons. So defensively speaking, you seem to be coming in slightly above average. Your midfield's certainly fine. Uh, your attack is certainly fine. I mean, these are th these are levels that we're looking at consistently across all of these levels, these, this little gray line being the league average that indicate that your team is at least capable of a top half finish, probably a playoff finish if you manage it well, which you've been able to pull off. And technically speaking, you have a very technical team overall, including the best free kick taking team in the league, which isn't exactly what you want, but your technicality is miles higher than even the league average overall. So if, we, if we're just assessing like your best players and what your talent is, your, your players are good enough to be able to do something with this, right? You've got a pressing forward who's got very well distributed attributes to be a pressing forward, even though you're trying to get rid of this guy, which I can understand he doesn't look amazing. Like this Poveda guy, th this is a legit, lower Premier League level type player that we're looking at with a lot of athleticism, some really great ball carrying. I think you just need to balance this out a bit, honest to goodness. I think that you have created a tactic that is simply too offensive. Uh, when you put these guys in attack, they are all trying to get further forward like all the time. And I know th there's a difference here, right? Because it says get further forward in the instruction. But when you go over to attack, you see you're trying to cross from the byline. That's this line up here. And then you have the difference with the wingers as well. They're trying to all get to the byline and make a play. It's not, I understand how you're trying to balance this out, but having this many people on attack, it opens you up so much. And and that's born, that's born out by how bad your defense has been. I mean, you have the second worst defensive record in the league. So we, you need to take a step back here 
figure out who actually needs to be on attack. And remember that if somebody is on support, they can still effectively contribute to an attack. If you put this guy on support, he can still effectively trip contribute to an attack. He's just not always going to try and get to the byline. Same with your wing back over here. I'm going to float around the advanced playmaker. Centerman on attack, I do love. If I was honestly tailoring this tactic, those are the changes that I would make because the wing back and the winger aren't necessarily going to get in the way all the time because your wing back is not wedded to the side. You actually can tell them to stay wider or you can tell them to sit narrower and you can sit inside the channel of the wing if they start running into each other. What is your third issue? Uh, I do feel like I have really good U23s, U18s. Well, that's, I mean, not a bad problem to have, right? You've got a lot of talent down here. What you might want to start looking for is the opportunity to give these guys playing time. You want to loan out guys. Uh, once they turn 19, if they're not really developing training with your team anymore, you want to start loaning them out. Or this guy, he's 19. He's a two-star, five-star. Bring him up to the first team and start giving him a few chances. This guy's not bad because that's really going to help launch their development if you just keep them down in the u23s forever i mean it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything for will powell or geth and pritchard they need to be playing at a higher level and you're in england there's like 150 clubs below you that would happily take these guys on alone but i don't think you're as far away as you perhaps think you are i think your tactic is just too open defensively and you've gone up against a few teams that have exploited that you have the talent to be the top upper part of the league with the way you're recruiting right now focus on tactics instead of recruitment and your one cardinal sin is Sweeper keeper on attack? Really? On Jamie coming? Blues? What are you doing there? I would love to just understand. Next! All right, we have Raskolnikov, 1866, managing Super Sport United, undertaking my annual save of trying to win the Club World Cup from every continent. That's a really interesting save. Super Sport United squad's extremely bloated with U18 Wonder Kids approaching 21. Uh, the foreign registration requirements, with most of them on money losing loans in the division. For my zeal in buying these players. 67 in the first team out on loan coming in. That uh, has ruined my financial projections. Yeah. As I look to overhaul in preparation for the next Club World Cup, who would you move on and who would you build a team around? Well, this is, uh, I don't think we've ever saved a save that looked exactly like this, but let's see what we can do. 67. Did you need a priest? Like an exorcism or something. Super Sport United, for those that are, are not familiar, we are in South Africa and it does look like you've managed to take over the league, but this is all about Club World Club. This is all about Club World Cup and player hoarding so let's look at the competitions i do not know the south african premierships registration rules uh, off the top of my head i feel like a failure for that but i hope you can forgive me maximum of five foreign players kind of screwed here but under 21 players are automatically eligible to play in all matches i see what your issue is here so you have basically hoarded a bunch of young talented players and now all of them are kind of coming into being over 21 and they don't count is the under 21 anymore is that what i'm that what i'm hearing now nah, that that would be a that would be a significant problem but it looks like you do actually have a lot of south african players in your squad which is good so we've got some and let's filter out this that we can see oh my oh my you were not kidding dude it's a lot of guys you have loaned out are south african i if you have any decent south african youth players you obviously want to you want to keep them because they are worth their weight in gold with the foreign player rule and what i'm curious to know is what the length of time it is that it takes to become south african because this is what helped me get all oh, it's nasty because in belarus it was three years which is why i was able to cultivate a team to win the champions league out of belarus that had a lot of guys that had belarusian citizenship but weren't born in belarus right wonder kids we'd signed from around the world now this is six years though or five years yeah it's a problem if you sign somebody at 18 they have to be there for five years and they're 23. And all of a sudden, if that's what you want to do, you don't have oh, not a lot of margin for error on being able to pick the right wonder kids. And what this means is essentially you just got to zero in on on the best ones. And in the way that I'm going to do that without looking at the 67 players that you're running out of this, this kind of farm is I think this guy's South African. Yeah. So you want to cultivate. Obviously, you are looking at every South African youth team until the end of time to sign players from them. And it does seem like you've done that. If somebody is not showing development right away, they're not valuable to you. And you are loaning them to sell them explicitly. So once you identify a player as somebody that can be loaned to be sold, you probably want to loan them to Europe. The board trusts you enough. You can 
pick your own affiliate club and try and pick one in Europe so that you can loan players there and try and increase their value. You need to immediately start to loan to sell. Create a whole list of players from your team. And I know you wanted to know who to build around. Well, I'm just gonna come in here and look at the reports. And if you trust the guy that's providing these reports, you just identify these guys like immediately. You go, Fabrice Traore is one of those guys. He's very professional. He's 18 years old. He's a great ball carrier. Uh, he's not necessarily an excellent facilitator, but this dude can absolutely shred a defense. He's somebody that we're going to want to, to keep around where somebody like Thomas Baloyi is South African, so congratulations. See this guy, Tanzania. You love him, right? He's got this great potential. You shouldn't have bought this guy in the first place because you know you're not going to be able to do anything with it. All these five-star potentials are not created equally. Trust your eyes. You see that improvement. You go into training uh, or development progress. You look at attributes. Who's going up? Who's going down, right? And if, if they're not going up rather significantly, they're not somebody that is valuable to you and you need to move them. These loan outs, like you said, are not helping you. You're loaning them out in South Africa, which is trying to get them nationality, but it takes five years. And if you're losing money on them for five years, just to get a player that's not going to be hugely important for you, it's super not worth it. This is a weird corner of football manager strategy, but I think you're getting what I'm like putting down here. Next, cheesy casts managing Newcastle. Well, hi Zealand. I've recently started playing football manager and have loved your content. It's been very helpful. Well, thank you. Uh, I have, however, encountered a big issue. Oh no. In my efforts to clear out all the deadwood and make a push for European play in my first season of the job, I've butchered the team's form, budget, and transfers in general. I've tried to fix this a couple times, tried to reach Europe, but I have been ultimately unsuccessful. Any help would be fantastic. Also, Baragi is mental in this FM. I would highly suggest signing him. Thank you for the, uh, the idea. So let's see. We've got somebody that's new to Football Manager, and they are taking charge of Newcastle. And the only excuse for not succeeding at Newcastle is you are new at Football Manager. But also, Newcastle's just that cheesy FM experience isn't it? It's all right. We can do this. You're new to the game and I'm here to help. Let's we'll see how many seasons are we? Oh, well, just one, I think. 20, well, no, I mean, this is our first season and you're in six. So our form's taking a nosedive. You're doing fine. I should probably say this more sometimes on save your saves, but you're fine. You're in your first season. Sometimes you just lose. You are Newcastle and you haven't been able to completely overhaul the squad yet. And you go on the road against a team that's got world-class talent in Tottenham and they beat you four to nothing. And that's going to happen. You're doing fine. Relax. Next. Oh, but wait, unnext that. You said you butchered the budget. Just move some of that payroll over here. You got 32 million in potential transfer budget. Yeah, I know you're new to the game. So just like, just in case you didn't know that. And your balance is fine and your financial status is rich. You, you can literally never murder the budget of this team. Now next, we have Kilgore managing Nottingham Forest. Second season in the Prem. I feel like I have a good enough squad to survive, but I cannot string a sequence of events together. Add this to my two star players being out for four weeks. And I'm not sure there's an issue with my tactics, but finding a win and sometimes just scoring is an issue. I normally use tactics one and three, would like to transition to two at some point. So we're staying in the prem with an Nottingham Forest team that's gotten promoted, stagnating, hit a poor run of form, and also run into some injuries. I'm just gonna say off the top right here that the injury issues in Football Manager 22 are almost exclusively from the fact that they have made stamina more important uh, and affect performance more. So if you are gig and pressing the bejesus out of everybody every three days for an entire season, you're gonna get a lot more injuries and your players are gonna get a lot more tired. Just know that. I guess it's something they talked about going from FM21 to FM22, that the stamina, the intensity of play is going to have more of a wear and tear effect. Like if you focus down the wings, your wings are just going to get more tired because they're being asked to do everything. Said so you're in a poor run of form and this, ladies and gentlemen, is why we created Save Your Saves. For when you are just cruising along, you have a great preseason, you win your first match, and then all of a sudden you're losing 5-1 to Norwich and you have no idea where it's all gone wrong. <laughs> all right, boys. We're going in. Into the relegation zone after eight matches played, more specifically. You got the promotion and you did finish 15th in, in your first season. Take a look at that. Medical center. So, oh, well, Lorenzo Luca and Kavard Skelly. I actually, oh, it's disgusting how I like, I just know these players without even. Luca and Kvart Skellia are both players that we, we talk about in videos. Lorenzo Luca is such an interesting player with the 18, you know, 6 7. Kvart Skellia is an incredible flair dribbler. Both of them out is an issue, but let's take a look at the tactics because that was the main concern. You have Kasper Kozlowski, you've got Kenobi. Oh my God! Obi Wan Augustine Kenobio, my favorite. Don't know if he's real Premier League quality, though. That is an interesting pickup. That's the best Augustine Kenobio I've ever seen. Woodburn, Lauren, Dewsbury Hall, Willie at Swedberg. I see somebody's paying attention to the videos. That's a great pickup. How's he developing? This is, oh, well, 
Chinas. You ruined him. The man is a model citizen at the beginning. What did you do to him? Probably all this losing. All right, let's take a look. Uh, Force opposition inside is bold. So you said you use mainly one and three. You struggle to score. Well, this is an insanely defensive formation, right? Now the wingbacks on auto, oh, you're on attack. Okay, this is wild. You've got two playmakers next to each other, but one is holding. Swedberg's not gonna put any pressure on the box, but you have very aggressive wingbacks and very aggressive wings on attack. I think if you're using one and three, you're being way too aggressive here. I mean, do I need to remind you that you are not, I, look, you can't play super defensive in football manager, but that also doesn't mean that you wanna go all out attack four, two, four every time you're playing. Because if, if we look at this comparison, you're in your second year in the league, you're gonna be bad here, right? Like your attack in particular, you see you have the worst off the ball pace and acceleration of any attack. I don't know if you've heard of this match engine, but pace and acceleration are kind of important. And the standard of your average finishing is the lowest in the league. Physically not good, technically okay, mentally below average, but okay. You can't be going out trying to attack these teams, man. And, and then I'm sure this is bearing out the fact that you don't have a clean sheet in the league ever since you beat Wolves one to nothing in the opening game. If you try and attack too much, you end up not scoring. You've been clean sheeted, right? Four times in your last six games, you've scored two goals in your last six games. Playing those really attacking formations, you need to be more sound and I, it's sounds counterintuitive doesn't it but if you keep throwing yourself into the attack right and you're playing more direct and you're playing you're you're aggressively focusing on wing play this is just this is just a, this is a lot and i understand that like you've set this up you're trying to feed crosses into lorenzo luca that makes sense to me but this is such a hard set singular way to play that it almost bothers my sensibility of allowing your team some some fluidity now the get stuck in is dangerous i'm sure you're picking up more red cards than you would like and if you're forcing players into the middle i mean you're really not super present defensively in the middle to be able to receive them so if you allow all the wings to cut in your center backs are probably getting overwhelmed because you are to a fault over aggressive with your wing backs i think in a lot of senses especially at this formation because both of these guys will be on attack they're on automatic and if you're on attacking they're on attack both of your wing backs and this is the one that you're not forcing them into the middle with i think you might have out thunk yourself here right? If you're countering, that has to be on. Like if you're countering, that has to be on. If you are countering, that has to be on, right? Or you are specifically playing to Lorenzo Luca. Those are your only two options. Those are the only two options. If you are countering, it's pass into space or you're playing off Lorenzo Luca every single time. And you have such a strong wing emphasis. I talked about this earlier in the video, man. If you keep doing this, right, your wingers just get exhausted over the course of the 90 minutes. Now doing it on both, if they have great stamina and work rate, they'll survive. But Augustine Canobio is not, I mean, he's not a brilliant player. He's good. He is a below average Premier League player. It's not like Woodburn's lighting the league on fire either. I understand if you want to put all of your hopes and dreams on Lorenzo Luca and he's very good, it's not that good. He's not good enough that you want to build an entire tactic around servicing Lorenzo Luca. You probably want to play with two strikers if that's the way you wanted to set that up. And you only have one. I mean, Kasper Kozlowski is a, he's a versatile player. Honestly, Kasper Kozlowski is maybe the best player you've got, right? He's very intelligent. He knows how to pick out a ball. But when you've got him in this position, now you're focusing all your play down here. Casper's an afterthought. You've overthought this. You've tried to outthink the game. Floated crosses is right. I'm not saying everything you've done is wrong. Play for set pieces is right, especially when Luke is there. But Ethan Ampadu's not a force aerially. McKenna, not a force aerially, at least at the Premier League level. And this Lauren character, certainly not a force aerially. So you need to adjust. And I think the fact that Luke is hurt, you haven't adjusted, indicates that you are you are a little too married to doing what you 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 think is right. And if you really want to play off the wings that much. Distribute to Lorenzo Luca when he's healthy. And he'll knock the ball down to one of these three guys and go from there. Now, you said you want to eventually transition to this. I think that works. Yeah, this could absolutely work. I've seen this tactic work. I, I don't know about double defending here. I think that could get too ugly. You need a bit... Uh, what, what is incredibly dangerous is when the defense is distracted by three guys and one of these guys is making a run. So you pick one of these and you want to make them a better offensive player and you do that. Okay, this is a very... I don't know, I need, I'm dehydrated. I'm getting a tactic headache. You don't have a ridiculously untalented team. You've got a team that's gonna be good enough to stay up. And the longer you stay up in the Premier League, the more you utilize loans, the more money you're just gonna continue to make. And you need to set up your scouting to look for wonder kids, slowly bring those guys through as you clearly understand. You've done a couple of times. You need to do a couple of more times and you'll be in a good position. Fortunately, from the analyst comparison, you have enough talent to pull this off. Your tactics just 
two attacking and two pigeonholed. Next, we, we have Oli, TM, a Dynamo, BFC Dynamo. I usually never manage outside Norway, so I'm really in deep water here in Germany. I took this regional league aside, Dynamo or Dynamo Berlin, uh, and got them to the three league. Recently, I started losing hard. I thought maybe I did the right signing by, I did the right thing by signing some players, but somewhat look good, but now I feel like I may have screwed myself. I'm not very experienced in lower league management, so I would love to know what to do next. Fortunately, my Twitch save, we've been doing some serious lower league management, and I actually just recently came out with this video about how to build your team. And basically what I'm going to tell you, I believe will mostly be in that video because it has to do with signing players for free. So I'm going to get mad at you if you spent money on players. You spent 96,000. This is not terrible. Financially, you are overspending your payroll budget, so you're doing what you should do. You might have just gone in the wrong direction. I see you picked up my boy Raphael AI. Nice snatch. Well, let's check on the players that you signed. That's who you were worried about. So the guy you spent $96,000 on, it's a good pickup. This is absolutely a good pickup. This dude should be playing striker every day and twice on Sunday. I know that he is short. He does not have the agility or balance to play on the wing. Please tell me that Frederick Akachuk, okay, he's playing as a poacher. I would recommend playing him as an advanced forward as off the ball movement is actually really, really dangerous. Double wall winner is, is probably too much. That's just two midfielders that have closing down on more and aren't really looking to be that aggressive offensively. That can definitely limit your offensive output. And you're feeling frustrated, but look, you did just get promoted. Okay, first season, you won promotion, and now you're in a league where if you look at the talent, which is analyst report, which nor I, I don't usually use this when in I'm in my own saves, but it's a great way to visualize a team's overall talent level compared to the teams around them, because I haven't been involved in your saves long enough to have a good feel for that. Your team is obviously not at a talent level where it's able to compete immediately for a top spot in the league, right? The jump from the regional league to the third division is significant. The third division's the first national division in any time you're doing that going to the first national division is going to be difficult is that always has a lot more money in it because you're chasing the opportunity to get into the higher national divisions which in regional leagues is not something that's prioritized so now that you visualize that you shouldn't beat yourself up too much for having a bit of a slow start what you need to do is wean out the guys that aren't working and you need to keep the guys that are you need to have your scouts looking for end of contract players which they are looking for squad player. You have one scout looking for loans. That's fine. You don't, you haven't even signed all your scouts. Ollie, I know you said you normally manage in Norway. And so you probably didn't understand that. Like, look, this is a pretty big jump up in competition. You got to sign all your scouts, dude. Sign your scouts, scout end of contract, create an end of contract shortlist. Find guys that are going to be able to help your team that you don't have to spend money on. And I hope that in the saving of these saves, we have helped save some of yours as well. We will see you on the next Save Your Saves on a stream on the live channel. We even have a freaking clips channel now. Uh, Zealand clipped funny clips every day from the stream. I will see you on one of those places. Have a fabulous day.